So welcome you to today's lecture. Uh, if anyone of you have any doubts uh, uh, from the last lecture, uh, please feel free to ask. Any doubts from the last lecture? So if there are uh, no questions, let me move forward. So last time we were discussing different methods to find the UMVE. And that I have summarized in the form of these two popular methods. It says that if Tx is a complete sufficient statistic, then the UMV of any estimable function psi theta is determined by the set of equations. Uh, just one second. So what it says is if Tx is a complete sufficient statistic, then the UMV of any U estimable function psi theta one can get by solving this set of equations. Because you know that if T is complete sufficient, then delta T would be UMV for its expectation, which is psi theta over here. So I have to find a UMV of psi theta. So I look at one function of a sufficient statistic, which is unbiased for psi theta. So this in many situations may lead to a set of equations, which you may be able to solve and that is how you can get the UMV. The other method is through the raw black polarization. If delta x is any unbiased estimator of psi theta and Tx is a complete sufficient statistic. So I try to find out one unbiased estimator, which may not depend on the complete sufficient statistic, but then I can get an unbiased estimator which depends on complete sufficient statistic by conditioning this delta x given T and taking the expected value. Certainly this will be a proper estimator because T is sufficient. So this conditional distribution does not depend on theta. So expectation does not depend on theta. So it is a proper statistic which depends only on T. So it would be a function of a complete sufficient statistic and it would be unbiased for psi theta because expectation of a conditional expectation is same as expected value of delta X, which by choice I had chosen to be unbiased for psi theta. So expected of phi eta would be psi theta, and you're done. Now to see applications of these, let us consider a few examples. So let us have next to extend the ID normal mu sigma square random variables, where theta, both the parameters mu and sigma are unknown. Mu can take any value in the real line, sigma is zero to infinity. Find the UM views of mu and sigma square and also find the UMV of mu plus sigma. Now in this case, I know that T, which is X bar and S square is complete sufficient. So I just need to find unbiased estimators, which are functions of X bar and S square. So if I am finding unbiased estimator of mu based on t, it could be just expected of x bar. So I know that expected value of x bar is mu for every theta. It is a function of a complete sufficient statistic. So this says that x bar is mu mv for mu. I also know that expected value of S square. So let me call that as S and minus one square. So that it is clear that it is based on a sample of size N minus one. So it is one upon N minus one. So we select psi minus X bar whole square. I know that this is same as, so you can write down S N minus one, doesn't matter. For every theta below the theta. So this implies that this is also a function of a complete sufficient stress T. So S N minus one whole square is UMVE for sigma square. Now to get an UMV of mu plus sigma, I have to get an unbiased estimator, 
based on X bar and S square for mu and sigma. I know the unbiased meter of mu, which is X bar. So if I can get an unbiased meter of sigma, I am done. So note that uh, what you have is uh, n minus one S square by sigma square is chi square on n minus one. So that means if I take S, I can get a sigma over here. So that means S would have same distribution as sigma divided by square root of n minus one and then square root of chi square on n minus one. So that means expected value of S is same as sigma upon root n minus one. Expected value of square root of chi square on n minus one. Which is same as sigma upon root n minus one. This would be some constant. What would be that? One by two to power n minus one by two, gamma n minus one by two, e to power minus x by two, x to power n minus one by two. And then there is square root of x, so n by minus one by two plus one by two will make it n by two, so it will become two to power n by two, gamma n by two. So with this, I can get expected value of Cn times S is equal to sigma. Cn is basically you're adjusting this constant to bring it over here and sigma is just remaining over here. So Cn is basically is nothing but square root of two n minus one divided by square root two, gamma n by two divided by gamma n minus one by two. So that is a C. So UMVOE for psi theta is, so expected value of X bar plus CNS is mu plus sigma. So this is the UMV for mu plus sigma. Now let's do the next example. Let X1, X2, Xn be binomial one theta, where theta is unknown. Find the UMV of variance of X1 using method one. Method one means you solve those set of equations. So first I try to find out what is my complete sufficient statistic. I know that T is equal to some and Xi is complete sufficient. T also I know is binomial and theta. So I try to look for a delta such that expected value of delta T is same as psi theta, which is variance of X1. Variance of X1 is nothing but theta into one minus theta which is equivalent to saying that summation k is equal to zero to n, delta k, n choose k, theta to the power k, one minus theta to the power n minus k, is same as theta into one minus theta, for every theta belonging to zero one. I can convert this, I can make it this theta into one minus theta to the power k, and one minus theta I can take it over there. So what I do is, I can put theta into one minus theta as rho. So that as theta varies from zero to one, rho varies from zero to infinity. You can take any value of theta between zero. And theta becomes how much? Theta is rho upon one plus one. Right? So I bring this over here. So what do I get over here? So you said k is equal to zero to n delta k and choose k and then theta upon one minus theta to power k that makes it rho to power k. This is same as theta divided by one minus theta to power n minus one. So theta is rho upon one plus rho divided by because one minus theta to power n is over here that goes over there. So one minus theta to power n minus one. What is one minus theta? One minus theta is one upon one plus rho. The power n minus one. And what does that become? Rho into one plus rho to power n minus two. Okay, it goes over there. Okay, so this becomes rho and this I can expand. So j is equal to zero to n minus two. N minus two choose j. Rho to power g, 
when rho becomes over here, it becomes rho to the power j plus 1. And j plus 1 can go from 1 to n minus 1. So this is j is equal to 1 to n minus 1. n minus 2. When it was j plus 1 over here, here it was j, so it would become j minus 1. Rho to the power j. So now you have a power series. This happens for every row belonging to zero to infinity. Now your power series on both the sides, which match over an interval. So each of the coefficients would be same. So that means delta k should be the coefficient of rho to power k over here, which is n minus one, choose k minus one, rho to power k, I have got, uh, this would be for k is equal to one to n minus one. Rho to power zero coefficient is not here, so that means delta zero would be zero, and similarly delta n would be zero. So this would be zero if k is equal to zero. So this becomes the UMV for values of x1. Just equating. Now let us look at uh, x1, x2, x and b ID using method two find the UMV of psi theta. So using method two means that means you have to find the conditional distribution. I know that T is equal to Xn is complete sufficient. I need to get one unbiased estimator. I can get expected value of X1 as theta by two. So expected value of two X1 is theta. So I consider it a T, which is expected value of two X1 given T it is the UMB. By that method two. But I know that two times X1 upon T, and I can write down like this as T, and this becomes T. So this t comes outside, so this becomes 2t, because t is fixed over here. It becomes expected value of x1 given t, given t. But you can easily see that uh, x1 divided by t is ancillary. This is x1 divided by t. And t is complete sufficient, so they would be independent. So this is same as 2t times expected value of x1 given t. Because x1 given t is ancillary, x1 given, sorry, x1 divided by maximum is ancillary and t is complete sufficient. So by Basil's theorem, they would be independent. So this would be this. Now, this you can get very easily because you know that expected value of x1, expected value of t into expected value of x, which is same as expected value of x1. And you know that x1 by t is ancillary. T is complete sufficient, so they would be independent. So this expectation would be same as expected value of T into expected value of X1 divided by T. So expected value of X1 divided by T would be same as expected value of T divided by expected value of X1. What is expected value of T? The distribution of maximum you know is N. In fact, you know this is same as unit theta T. The density of maximum is nothing but n t to the power n minus one divided by theta to the power n dt. And expect of theta one, t one is theta by two. Sorry, t one is x one basically, right? It is everywhere x one. Uh, expected value of, uh, I made some mistake over here. So expected value of x one given t is expected value of x one given expected value of t. Expected of x one is, so if I have to do it over here, expected value of x1 is theta by t. And expected value of t is nothing but j over theta. t and t to power n minus 1 by theta to power n dt. So you can calculate this would be n upon n plus 1. So it becomes n plus 1 by n. Right? And theta, theta 
gets cancelled to n plus one by n. So your UM view is n plus one by n epsilon. Just you do using method. But of course, one could have directly seen that expected value of xn is n upon n plus one theta. Or in other words, expected value of n plus one upon n xn is theta. And since it is a function of a complete sufficient statistic and unbiased for theta, so it would be u and v e for theta. Now, for a quite general class of loss functions, Bussell proved that no locally minimum values unbiased humanoid exists. So you see, there could be situations where you cannot even find the locally minimum variance on bias estimator. Forget about finding the uniformly minimum variance on bias estimators. So Basu gave a lot of examples of situations where no LMVOE exists. Similarly, for bounded loss functions, no LMVOE exists except in trivial cases. So let's consider the following example, which shows that if your loss function is bounded, then the locally minimum variance unbiased estimator may not exist. So let the less loss function L theta D be bounded. So suppose L theta D is between zero to N. Also assume that L theta, when D psi theta is zero. So that means when you're estimating psi theta correctly, loss is zero. Suppose that psi theta is U estimated. What does that mean? That means an unbiased estimator of psi theta is exists. <laughs> and theta be an arbitrary point in theta. So theta naught is any arbitrary point in this. Consider estimation of psi theta based on a single observation x. For any unbiased estimator, so suppose you are given an unbiased estimator delta x of psi theta. Using this unbiased estimator, I consider another estimator, which depends on parameter n. This n is not sample size, because here sample size is one. So delta nx, n is some parameter, which is I'm taking psi theta naught with probability one minus one by n. n times delta x minus psi theta naught plus psi theta naught with probability one by n. So it is kind of a randomized estimator. It is not a non-randomized estimator. No, because here your, your loss function is not given to be convex. So I cannot say that I will restrict only to the non-randomized estimator because here it is some loss function which is convex. Yeah, which is bounded, nothing about convex. And what was this delta? Delta was a given unbiased estimator to you. Now I would say that whatever unbiased estimator you give it to me, I can find another estimator which is unbiased and whose risk is arbitrarily close to zero. That means its risk would be smaller than the risk of delta x. So I construct this estimator based on this. Now one can easily show that expected value of delta nx is psi theta, because what would be expected value of delta nx? With probability one minus one by n, it is one by psi theta naught, so it is one minus one by n times psi theta naught. And with probability one by n, it is this, so this is same as this. Expected value of n times delta x, minus psi theta naught plus psi theta naught into one by n. So this you can see from here one by n psi theta naught and one minus one by psi theta naught will give you psi theta naught plus expected value or n times expected value of delta x minus psi theta naught. But Delta is unbiased for psi theta, so it would be locally unbiased at theta naught. So expected value of delta x at theta naught would be psi theta naught, so it is zero. So this turns out to be psi theta naught. In fact, even if you have to consider it at any theta, it would be this quantity, and then so suppose you have to consider it at. Uh, uh, any theta, right? So let me just so 
So if I had to consider it at any theta, what happens is, then expected value at any delta n x, small n x, would be expected is a constant, so this is psi theta naught into one minus one minus plus expected value at theta of n times delta x minus psi theta naught plus psi theta naught into one by n. Now this psi theta naught into one by n and psi theta naught one minus one by n will give you psi theta naught plus n times expected value of delta x minus psi theta naught, but actually delta x is psi theta. So n into one by n become n by n, psi theta minus psi theta naught, and this becomes psi theta. So this is clearly unbiased for psi theta as delta x was, and it is a proper estimator because theta naught is a fixed quantity which is known to it, known to us. If I consider its risk, because your loss function is convex, so its risk would be nothing but expected value of L theta delta nx. And there would be two kind of a uh, randomization. So first you look at randomization with respect to L star, L star theta delta nx would be nothing but one minus one by n, L theta psi theta naught plus one by n L theta n times delta x minus psi theta naught plus psi theta naught. That is one. Now you take expected value of this. So this is expected value of L star of theta delta nx. Would be, you can just look at it because L is bounded, so it would always be less than or equal to m by n, and which goes to zero as n goes to infinity. So I can choose n large enough so that I can make this risk arbitrarily close to zero. And since loss function is convex, a non-negative risk is always greater than or equal to zero. So I can basically, what it means is, by choosing n sufficiently large, I can make the risk of delta n smaller than the risk of delta, which was an arbitrary unbiased estimator given to you. So that means if you are given any unbiased estimator, I can suitably, be, suitably construct another unbiased estimator delta n x and suitably choose n so that its risk is smaller than the risk of delta at this point theta n. So in this case, this suggests that no locally minimum values and bias to the axis, and that was happening because your risk was bounded, because this was happening. Okay? Because uh, this is less than equal to m by n is straightforward because this L theta psi theta naught, the risk at theta naught, when I consider the risk at theta naught, it would be zero. L theta naught psi theta naught would be zero. And this is one by n expected value of this, but this is bounded by m, so it is less than equal to m by n, which goes to c. So what it says is uh, these examples were just for theoretical interest to emphasize that not always UMVE exists. Forget all UMVE, even the locally minimum variance and bias estimator may not exist. Okay, now let's do this example. Suppose you have a random sample from normal mu sigma square, where mu belongs to R and sigma is greater than zero. Find the UMV of mu when sigma is known. When sigma is known, you know that x bar is complete sufficient. Expected value of x bar is mu for every mu. So it is a function of a complete sufficient statistics unbiased for mu, so it is u and u.
find the umv of sigma to power r for r greater than n when mu is known. So in this case, mu is known. So that means t is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n xi minus mu whole square is complete sufficient. So I need to find an unbiased estimator of sigma to power r based on t. But I know that t has a chi square on n. t by uh, sigma square, right? t, t by sigma square would have a chi square on n. I have to get a sigma to power r. So that means I multiply both the side by r to power 2. That means t to power r by 2 would have sigma into chi square n to power r by 2. So I look at expected value of t to power r by 2, which is sigma times expected value of chi square to power r by 2, chi square on n. So it would be 0 to infinity, t to power r by 2. The density of chi square on n is nothing but e to power minus t, t to power n by 2 minus 1 by gamma n by 2. And what does this turn out to be? This would become uh, uh, t to power gamma of n plus r by 2, 2 to the power n by 2 also, right? And then 2 to the power n plus r by 2. So this becomes 2 to the power r by 2 gamma of n plus r by 2 and gamma of n by 2. Now for this to be meaningful, r should be greater than minus n, otherwise this integral will not be finite. And that is what is given to you, r is greater than minus n. So what does that mean? Expected value of, I take this on this side, so gamma n by 2, divided by 2 to the power r by 2, gamma of n plus r by 2, and sigma, right? sigma of 2, times t to the power r by 2 is same as sigma. And this is a function of a complete sufficient stress of t, which is summation xi minus mu whole square. So this is the UMB. Now, uh, find the UMV of sigma to power r when, of course, in this case, r should be greater than minus n plus 1. Then I know that t is not complete sufficient. Here, mu and sigma square both are. So in this case, mu is also unknown. So that means x bar and Sn minus 1 whole square is complete sufficient. And what do you know? You know that n minus 1, Sn minus 1 whole square by sigma square is chi square on n minus 1. I have to get sigma to power r, so I multiply both the sides by r to power r by 2. So that means S minus, Sn minus 1 whole square to power r by 2. would be same as sigma to power r divided by n minus 1 to power r by 2. Expected value of chi square on n minus 1 whole power r by 2. Now you have found for chi square n, you have found out this value, so this would be same as this, except that this n gets replaced by n minus 1. And you can get the UMV. Okay, now let us do this. Find the UMV of the pth quantile x1 less than or equal to psi p theta is p, that means phi of psi p theta minus mu by sigma. This is a distribution function of a normal zero one is p. That means your psi p theta is nothing but phi inverse p. So that means mu plus sigma times phi inverse p. 
you have already found out the estimator of a mu and bioestimator of mu, which is x bar. I also found out a bioestimator of sigma in part C that you can get it over here. And phi inverse P is a constant. So you can get the UMV from the C and the UMV X bar of mu. So that is straightforward. Let us do this uh, uh, next part. Uh, for a fixed u naught belonging to R, find the UMV of psi theta, which is probability x1 less than equal to u. And you have to, it is saying that you take sigma to be one. Now, in this case, I know that x bar is complete sufficient because sigma is known to us. So I know an unbiased estimator of psi theta. What is an unbiased estimator of psi theta? Delta x, which is indicator x1 less than equal to u. That means which is one if x1 less than equal to u, zero otherwise is unbiased for psi theta. So what I need to look at. So UMV is delta not x. I just come decent this with respect to x bar. So that means expected value of indicator that x1 less than equal to u given x bar. Which is same as the conditional probability that x1 less than equal to u given x bar. Which is same as probability that x1 minus x bar is less than equal to u minus x bar given x bar. But given x bar, x bar is complete sufficient x1 minus x bar because sigma is known, so it will be ancillary. So they would be independent. So this conditional probability would be same as unconditional, but you treat x bar as constant. And x1 minus x bar has normal zero. And what will the variance? One by n. Sorry, one plus variance of x bar one by n. So one minus one by n. Right? One minus one by n, n minus one by n. Okay. So this would be root n upon n minus one u minus x bar. Okay. Because x1 minus x bar and x bar are independent. So this conditional protein would be the same as unconditional, but then you treat x bar as a constant because here x bar was given. And x1 minus x bar I know has because x1 minus x bar has a normal distribution would mean zero. And variance one minus so n minus one. So you get the UMU of two d x one less than equal to u, which is basically phi of u minus theta. Now it says get the UMV of a density of this one. This one. Now, this I leave as an exercise. These are just straightforward consequence of E that from E, you can get the P. E gave you a distribution function, phi of u minus theta. It says find the distribution of a derivative of this. Right? Just try to uh, do that. It will be straightforward, actually, but uh, through a nice observation. You can do a similar problem for uh, exponential x1, x2, x can be a random sample from exponents in mu sigma distribution. That means its PDF is this. Find the UMV of mu when sigma is known. Sigma is known, then you know that t, which is x1, is complete sufficient. Now, in this case, you also know that x1 again has exponential mu and sigma by n. So what is expected value of x1? mu plus sigma by n, because exponential has mean mu plus sigma. So expected value of x1 minus sigma by n is mu for every theta, or for every mu here, because all the parameter is mu. x1 is complete sufficient. So that means this is the UMB. Find the UMV of sigma when mu is unknown. 
Uh, oh, sorry, I made a mistake. Find the, no, this is okay. Find the UMV of mu and sigma is known. Find the UMV of sigma when mu is known. When mu is known, in this case, you know that this x1 greater than mu will not play any role because mu is known. So the only thing is, you know that t, which is summation i is equal to 1 to n, xi minus mu is complete sufficient. I also know that T by sigma has gamma distribution. And since there is no X1 over here, only mu, so gamma one and three. So expected value of T is same as sigma times expected value of gamma one and which is n for every theta. So that means expected value of T by n is sigma. For everything. This is a function of a complete sufficient statistic. So 1 upon n summation xi minus mu becomes the UMV of sigma. Now it says find the UMV of mu when sigma is unknown. Now in this case, I know that t, which is x1, and summation i is equal to 1 to n, xi minus x1 is complete sufficient. X1 has exponential mu sigma by n. Summation xi minus x1 by sigma has gamma 1 and minus 1. So what do you get from here? You get expected value of x1 is mu plus sigma by n. And from here, expected value of Summation xi minus one, xi minus x one is nothing but sigma times expected value of gamma one and minus one, which is n minus one, so it is n minus one sigma. So what do you get from here? You get from here expected value of x one, estimate of sigma is one upon n so one minus one upon n, into n minus one, summation xi minus x one is same as mu. This is a function of a complete sufficient statistic. So x one minus one upon n into n minus one, summation xi minus x one is the UMV. Let's do the part D. Over here again, mu is known, so I have to get a sigma. So in this case, I know from here, expected value of one upon n minus one, summation xi minus x one is sigma. By part C, this is a function of a complete sufficient statistic. So this is the UMD. It's very simple, straightforward applications of Neyman's theorem. Now let us consider these power series distributions, which are quite general in nature. In fact, your binomial, Poisson, uh, negative binomial, geometric, all become a particular case of power series distribution. So let's try to see how does a power series distribution looks like. Any questions so far? Okay, there are no questions. Any questions? If not, then let me just introduce these power series distributions. I see a random variable X has a power series distribution. If it is a discrete random variable with probability mass function belonging to this family, P theta, where theta belongs to capital theta, where theta is an interval in zero to infinity. And P theta X, which is probability X equal to X, is of the type AX, theta to power X, times c theta, x equal to zero one to so on, for some function ax, which is defined for x equal to zero one to and so on, for which this is a probability mass function, that means total sum should be one. What does that mean? That means summation x equal to zero to infinity, ax theta to power x should be same as c theta, but more important, it should be a finite quantity. So examples of uh, distributions belonging to these families are plenty. For example, binomial, 
if you consider pro dx equal to x, this becomes n choose x, p to power x into one minus p to power n minus x. But I have to get everything in terms of a theta to power x. So that becomes p upon one minus p to power x into one minus p to power n, right? X belonging to zero, one, two, and so on, right? X belonging to zero, one, two, and n. So that means I can keep this p upon one minus p as theta. So it becomes n choose x, theta to the power x. And then there is a some c theta, okay? One minus p to power n will be kind of a c theta. So this is my ax would be nothing but in this case, n choose x for x equal to zero to one by n and zero otherwise. So binomial distribution is a particular case of a power series distribution. Similarly, one can look at negative binomial distribution, number of failures preceding the mth success. So what is a probability x equal to x over here? Number of failures, that means x failures are preceding the mth success. That means x plus mth trial was a success and in x plus m minus one or m plus x minus one, there were only m minus one successes. So you can put m, m plus x minus one, choose m minus, m minus one successes or uh, so, or x values. Last one was success, and before that you had m minus one, and then one minus th one minus p sorry, this would be p to power n minus one. Last one was success and one minus p to power x. So you see your theta becomes one minus p. Ax becomes m plus x minus one choose m minus one because range is x equal to zero, one, two, so on. C theta becomes e to the power theta. Ax becomes one upon. So yeah, so this is what it is. Let us look at a Poisson case. Poisson case, you know that probability x equal to x is nothing but e to power minus theta. Theta to power x by factorial x. So your c theta becomes e to the power theta. Ax becomes one upon factorial x. So you see a lot of distributions fall under this power series distribution. So the if we cover the UMV estimation for the power series distribution, all these become particular cases. So let us consider. So first I have to show that this family power series family is complete. So that a star is complete. If Ax is greater than zero for all x equal to zero, one, two, so on. So that means you have an infinite support because it is positive for every zero. Then for any positive integer r, theta to power r is u estimable with its unique unbiased estimator given by this. How do you show that it is complete? It is straightforward because there's only one observation. This can be written in an exponential form. So if you have to write down p theta x, this is same as e to power log of theta to power x, so which becomes log theta into x. Then ax, and if you want, you can write down log of c theta to minus log c theta. And then ax, the range is not depending on theta. So it is exponential family with theta is equal to log theta. Since theta takes a value in an interval, log theta would also take a value in an interval. This contains an interval, its values contains interval in R. So by the result for the exponential family, this family is complete. 
So now, suppose if I have to get an unbiased emitter of theta to the power r, what do I have to do? I have to solve for expected value of delta x is equal to theta to the power r. That means summation x equal to zero to infinity. Delta x. What is the density? It is theta to the power x by c theta. Ax theta to the power x. Ax theta to the power x by c theta. And then it is unbiased for theta power. So this implies that summation x equal to zero to infinity. Delta x ax theta to the power x is same as theta to the power r and c theta. Note that here c theta was a normalizing constant. So if this sum has to be one, c theta has to be same as summation x equal to zero to infinity ax theta to the power x. So I just put that value over here. So this becomes summation x equal to zero to infinity ax theta to power x. So this becomes theta to power x plus r and theta to power x plus r I can put. So that means x plus r goes from r. So it becomes x equal to r to infinity. Right? And then it would be, it was x plus r over here. So it was r less. So a of x minus r theta to power x. This is exactly the same as this. Now you have a power series on both the sides. So the coefficients mass. So that means for theta zero, theta one, theta two, theta r minus one, there is no coefficient over here. So that means delta x, eight power x would be zero for x equal to zero, one, two r minus one. For x equal to r onwards, delta x, ax would be same as a times x minus r. So delta x would be ax minus r by ax for x equal to r, r plus one and so on. So this is a unique unbiased unit. So this was the case when you have a sample of size one from power series distribution. Now note that if you have a uh, sample of size n, then what do you have to do? If you have a sample of size n, then it will become joint density becomes P theta x product of A of xi theta to power summation xi C theta to power n. Again, here I can write down this is in an exponential form E to power summation xi log theta. So it looks like summation xi would be a complete sufficient statistic in this case if I have a random sample. So if I have x1, x2, x1 random sample from the power series, so that the distribution of T is power series with probability density function is given by this. Tx is complete sufficient follows from this. UMV of theta to the power IR, you can get it from here by last example because it belongs to the, it has a reproductive property, belongs to the same family, so it's an except, except that this A gets canceled, gets changed by capital A. So take this uh, as an exercise which is straightforward because if you have to get the probability t is equal to t. What does that mean? The same as probability that so it's an xi is equal to t. t theta t, uh, sorry, probability t is equal to t. What does that mean? That means I look at the density probability mass function of x1, x2, xn, and I sum x1 can go from zero to infinity xn can go from 0 to infinity, but my sum should be such that their sum is t. And then I look at the joint density of x1, x2, xn, which is product a of xi theta to power summation xi by theta to power n, so which is product a of xi theta to power summation xi by c theta to power n. But note that in each of these sum, the sum of these xi is always t because you're summing summation xi is t. So this theta to power summation xi would be theta to power t and there's no xi over there so that can come outside. So that becomes theta to power t, c theta to power n and sum over this over a of xi, which would depend on t and n. 
frequent identity set is FT. So it is again belonging to the power series distribution, which does this. And then you've already found out the UMV for power series. You can get that from here. Similarly, you can get the power series, uh, uh, UMV of pro to x1 is to x. So let me leave, leave this as an exercise. In fact, I have completed uh, uh, the full solution of this problem. It's just a matter of now some basic algebra which you need to complete. So this is all for uh, uh, today's lecture. Uh, we'll have a tutorial tomorrow. So I would encourage you to attempt uh, the homework problems, if there are anything, there is anything left from Basu's theorem homework, try to do that. Also attempt all the problems from the last homework. We can discuss those uh, tomorrow when we meet. So that's all for today. Uh, those of you who have any questions from today's lecture or otherwise may decide to stay back. Uh, others may leave. So let me just stop my uh, lecture over here. That's all from my side. Sir, in power series, sir? Yeah. Sir, why it is only for discrete uh, random variables? It is because that is how the sum is defined. Huh? You see, that is how you, you see if, uh, because a to power x, theta to power x, you can, you are writing down, right? So if you have to define it, let us say, let me stop sharing. Let me first save it and then let me. Yeah, so. Let me just. So what it says is, I would say that x belongs to p theta x probability mass function is given in terms of a x theta to power x and c theta. Right? This is what it is. Now, if you want to, uh, this is because this becomes a power series and you can talk about the sum of this power series um, and you can attach something X also with this, so this X equal to zero to infinity. This is a typical power series. And through this, this if it is a convergent, it would have some constant C theta. So that means through this power series, if theta is positive, you can construct a protein mass function. How do you construct a protein density function? That integral has to be one. So that means if you have to divide, do a, you see power series is only at discrete points, right? X equal to zero, one, two, and so on. So that is why it is called a power series. But you can define similar kind of a thing. So if you have, let us say, a subset A to B, interval A to B of, let us say C to D, of AX, theta to power X, DX, right? There, so this is some constant, right? which may depend on theta. So let me call this as B theta. Okay. The theta is positive for every theta positive. So I can define this using a PDF, right? I can define a PDF as theta x, ax, theta power x by B theta, right? X between C to D and zero otherwise. So this is a continuous distribution, right? So one can always do that. But power series, because it covers a lot of uh, discrete distributions as a particular case, that is why I is telling it separately. So this kind of a distribution, studying separately, may not make much sense, right? Because such kind of a distributions are not very common distributions. You can't find any distribution which is, for example, exponential. Even if you look at exponential, exponential is what? E to power minus theta x and Something right, so that cannot be written as in four minus theta. Normal cannot be written, written like this. Gamma cannot be written like this. Chi square cannot. But one can study this distribution. There is no harm in studying this distribution. 
The reason why I studied power series distribution was because a lot of discrete distributions become particular case of power series distribution. Does that satisfy you? Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other question anybody has? So try to do these homework problems. So we'll discuss them tomorrow. Now this Saturday, I'll have one uh, lecture. I have already announced, pre-announced it, and then yeah, be prepared for that too. Yeah, any other question anybody has? Okay, no? Then let me just, uh, yeah, Chanchal, Argadeep. Sir. Anybody having any question? Yeah. Sir. Yeah. I'm Argadeep, sir. Yeah. yeah. Uh, earlier today, you have sent me an email regarding yeah. uh, regarding some similarities in uh, answer scripts. Right, actually, right. Actually, sir, I have done that myself and I have not, I mean, uh, adopted to any unfair means. I have only uh, consulted your notes regarding that. Sir, you have done it using the chi-square method of uh, in the moments of chi-square approach. So I also use that only. And uh, as, sir, you can see that uh, beside the page, I have done some little rough work regarding. For, I, I first forgot that uh, if if we add two similar time, I mean uh, two gammas, then the first parameter will become two. Then that's why, sir, uh, I uh, was doing a simple rough works on the side. So you can see that I did that problem on my own. Well, and, I, I, I'll go through your email. Uh, uh, there was another person, right? What is his name, Margadeep, uh, who was along with you? I found a lot of similarity. In fact, it was exactly the same. You see, <laughs> exactly. I, can understand a, I can understand the similarity, but exactly the same is too much of a coincidence. So actually, I have not shared it, and uh, I can also prove it to you. That I have not shared it also, and there is some rough work you can see on the side see, of the I don't want to do a policing. I'm not a police inspector that who would. I'm not a, <laughs> right, I'm not no, a criminal investigator who would go into. I, I trust, generally, I trust my students. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, but, uh, but I need a very honest explanation from them. If they say I would trust, because I don't have any other choice other than to trust you. But when I'm trusting you, uh, you have to understand I'm having a lot of faith in you. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, so you have to keep, uh, you have to uh, think from your heart whether uh, what you have done is correct or not. And if you say that, no, uh, I'll trust you. I'll, uh, means I'm not going to do any further. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can assure you that I have not, uh, I have not adopted to any unfair means, and I have done the sum by myself. I just consulting your notes uh, from module one only, the, by the theorems you have used. So what about yes, other? I have consulted you, your notes. What about your other friend? What was his name? The Sh Shobhan, sir. Uh, he's Shobhan not here. Guy. Uh, he's yes, not sir. here today, right? Yes. yes ask sir. him to. He, ask he was him. here. He, Okay, you ask him to meet me sometime, right? Either through after the lecture, one of the days, or right? I'll, I'll talk to him also. All right. Okay, so we, uh, will I have to, uh, shall I have to be present? No, you can you can leave. You don't have to be present with him. You can, he can meet me independently. Uh, but uh, I'm taking your explanation. I trust you. Uh, Thank you, sir. I hope you know you're not disappointing me. Because no, sir. No, sir. You, you, you can take my, I, I can give you my assurance that I will not disappoint you. Future I will only course. consult your notes and books regarding on, and nothing else. Only I have allowed to consult your notes. And that's why I've consulted only some formulas from the notes that uh, if we add, uh, if we take two independent x1, x2 gamma, then x1 by x1 plus x2 will follow beta. And only these things I have consulted. Uh, only these, sir. Okay, I'll, I'll, I can I'll assure take, you. I'll take your explanation. You ask your yes, friend sir. to meet me, all right? Okay. Yes, sir. Th thank, okay, you, sir. thank you. Sir. Thank you for your time.